Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again modding something that I have purchased from Jose Madeira, AKA PR Props. He's an amazing sculptor, primarily working in clay. Then he casts his things in resin to sell on his website. I'll leave links to all his stuff down below. Please, 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 please go check him out. Buy something from him, support artists. He's an amazing one. You'll never be disappointed in the things that you purchase and he covers a wide range of things. I've built and modified several things from his castings. Uh, I'll make a playlist if you wanna see all of them. They are what I draw inspiration from. Literally across my build area, there are mannequin heads on a shelf and all of those mannequin heads have something that is PR props made. Um, it's what I draw inspiration from every day when I come into my build room. And I definitely want to praise him and give him the most clout and uh, support that I possibly can. So please, please, please reach out to him and buy something from him. He's amazing. So without further ado, today we are going to mod a Court of Owls mask from Batman that he made and is selling on his website. Let's get to building. This is a cast from Jose Madera, AKA PR Props. I've bought almost everything he sculpted over the past couple of years, and I'm always blown away by his skills. I know this seems like a simple enough mask, but to sculpt it so symmetrically is beyond my skill level. You could just sand this, paint it, and call it a day, but I like to put a little bit of my own flair into a PR Props build so that it feels like a collab between the two of us. My thought is that I'll keep one eye, plug one up, and then maybe do a cutout below the eye. This will give me more surface area to do my painting on. I still haven't ironed out all the details yet, but first I put my respirator on, turn on my air filter, and carve out the parts I don't want. I'm going to plug up my left eye with some epoxy, so to save myself a little money on materials, I'm packing the inside of the eye with foil to get it just shallow of the surface. I can pack the foil by hand and super glue it into place. Then I help refine the shape some more with a hard object, in this case, a pair of scissors. Once it is where I want it, I mix up some free form air epoxy to cover the foil. This is an equal parts A and B mixture that you mush together until it's an even light gray color. It wants to stick to everything so I work quickly and with a purpose. I just need to smooth it over the foil so that it sits just proud of the surface of the mask. Once it's hardened, fully curing in about 24 hours, I can sand it even.
The next day the eye patch is rock hard and ready to be sanded smooth. I have a coarse 120 grit sandpaper that I start out with glued onto a board to sand over the initial pass. As I get closer to the curve I want on my epoxy I switch over to finer and finer sandpapers to get rid of the markings from the previous grit. I end up with about a 320 grit sandpaper. I'm not trying to make it perfectly smooth I just want the transition between Jose's and amazing mask and my patch job to not be obvious. For a base coat, I'm using some flat gray primer spray paint. Then after that, I hit the surface with a brown, tan, black, and white spray paint to give a nice speckled look. Now, initially I wanted to do a nice glossy white base coat, but I think I may have sprayed my top coat a little too quickly and not given my primer a chance to dry. It left some wrinkles. Instead of sanding back and redoing it, I just leaned into it and did a speckling to hide some of the imperfections. After the acrylic paint and the blood effects, I don't know that it'll really be that noticeable. I pinned some reference images to my wall in front of me and cut out the size image I wanted to go on the mask. Doing searches, of the mask, the cover art for the DC Comics Absolute Batman Court of Owls HC 2023 edition caught my eye. It's a creepy looking anamorph type Batman mid transformation. I cut the outline of the image and trace it onto the mask surface, then make a second pass with a sharpie. Once the outline is done, I just freehand the rest of the details on the inside. I decide to keep the image very contrasting and make it black and white instead of colored like the reference image. So I first paint all the dark areas of the image straight black. For the face, I added areas I needed to fill in, kind of like a coloring book, but for the larger areas, I just freehanded the fill in. I'm using some acrylic paint and just laying down the initial pass. I used to paint a lot in college and kind of stopped once I started doing the YouTube thing. There wasn't a lot of views in my painting, so I moved on. Recently I found excuses to do a little bit of portraits here and there on props. I really enjoy the process and the nice thing about painting is if you mess up you can always just paint over it.
So I painted the head and now I'm going to show you the next step I am taking to add a little bit of value to my paint job. And by value, I mean a lightness to darkness. Instead of mixing white with the black to make a grayscale, I'm just going to add water to the acrylic. It'll make the paint a little more transparent, allowing for the base color to show through. The more water you add, the lighter the pass it'll make. You don't want to go too far in dilution because the paint will start to pull on the top unless you put down some sort of matte medium medium, which I did not. I make an initial pass with my paint and as it dries, I can add more and more layers to darken and make the transitions better in between the light and darkness. I use this process to cover the whole character. In total, it probably took me about two hours to paint the entire thing. Once all my black was down, I wanted to make another pass with some white to pull back some of the highlights in certain areas. I mainly did this on the eyes and to define the feathers a little more. This layer is kind of a less is more approach. To blend some of the areas into the dark, I smeared it with my finger, just pulling it across the wet paint to hopefully make a little bit of a transition. I also went back and painted the crack and the hole under the eye black. I'm still not sure what I wanted put under there, but I'll work that out in a bit. I pulled out a scrap piece of replacement tint visor that I am going to glue in the right eye. When I was cutting out the eye hole and sanding, I made sure that the inside edge of the eye was nice and flat. I put some masking tape on the lens, held it up to the spot, and then traced out the shape of the opening. This visor plastic is thin enough that I can easily trim it with scissors. When I do trim it, I trim a couple of millimeters outside of the line to give myself plenty of room to glob on hot glue later. Jose's painted mask, as well as some of the reference images that I saw, had a nice blood splatter effect on one side of the mask, so I'm going to add that to mine as well. I'm using some 5-minute epoxy mixed with a little red and black acrylic paint. This will make a more realistic blood drippage than just paint, and it'll always look like it's freshly been splattered and wet. I mix up the materials on my plate, then sporadically spread it on the mask. Once I get the eye on the right done, I thought it would be kind of cool to add little drips and stuff to the Batman talons and teeth while I was at it.
Originally, I wanted to paint or sculpt a mouth in that hole on the mask, but decided against it at some point. With the mask pretty much done, I feel like it needs something in that area to balance out the piece as a whole. My thought now is to laser cut out Court of Owls in some red transparent acrylic and add some resin over it to make it look like the blood is pulled to make out those letters. I pick a nice cursive font so that my letters flow and then cut it out on my Glowforge, not a sponsor. The mask is curved and my acrylic bits are straight. I think the word of would be fine because it's small, but those two other words are pretty long. They're about two inches across and I think they'll teeter on the mask if I don't do something to curve it. So I'm going to slightly heat up the acrylic sheets just enough so that the bits become floppy. Then I can push that onto my mask and as it cools, it'll take on the shape. My hands are a bit more heat resistant than the average person, so I would probably recommend wearing gloves or something for this but the plastic cools down pretty rapidly so it wasn't a big deal for me. Now I'm using some UV resin and a UV light to add dimension to the flat surface of my acrylic. This addition will round over the edges and give a better light reflection that reads as something pooling rather than a flat piece of plastic. The black background and the clear red didn't really stand out so much, so after all this was done I did go back over just the lettering with some more of that 5 minute epoxy and acrylic paint mix. The letters are held together in the recess by more of that UV UV resin epoxy hit with the UV lamp. Another thing I want to point out that I did that I thought was pretty ingenious was I pulled my rotary tool off of the foot pedestal and plugged in my light instead so that I could operate the UV light hands free while I was patching the resin as I went. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I'm super happy with the way this thing turned out. It is epic in its own right as a mask. Jose Madero's castings are top notch, next level. You'll never get disappointed with what you buy from him. Um, I was wor I'm always worried that I'm gonna mess up his casting because it is truly a work of art and I am putting blemishes and purposefully messing parts of it up. Um, this particular part, adding that uh, stuff over the top of it to plug that hole up, I was worried that it wasn't gonna be a seamless, but then I realized I'm painting over most of it, so it doesn't really matter that there may be a couple of cracks in here where it's uneven because the paint will hide it, but yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to see something you like online, make it your own, and then just stare at it with inspiration, thoughts, and anything else that could come to mind that you'd need in order to uh, build stuff. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You give them one of these, tell them much props. I'm going to put it on a shelf and I'm going to stare at it every day when I come in. Thanks again, Jose, for the cast and being awesome. Peace out.
If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.